It's been a captivating match so far and a captivating couple of games as well that we've just witnessed. First Hemman with the break and suddenly signs looking good that uh, maybe the British number two could grab a quick two sets to one lead, but Tursnoff hitting straight back. That's one of the problems that Hemman faces yeah. when he plays Tursen off. That second serve coming at 160 miles per hour. And that's why it has been difficult for him over the last couple of years to find a way to beat him. The Russian protecting his second serve almost as well as he does his first. Tursunov is not a thinking man's player. He steps up, plays by instinct, and usually that instinct means hitting the ball as hard as he can. And it's tough to combat that at times. It's tough to attack it. Too love in this uh, third set, 30-15 on his own serve, but all of a sudden, the Russian reeling off six straight points. <laughs> Perhaps that's just where he uh, struggles to compromise at times, Tursunov, hitting a shot that well, you wouldn't really see Roger Federer attempting. Those are the moments Henman would like to experience more often. You know, <laughs> a passing shot going over the baseline. I think that's why he does need to continue that tactic like he did there at the right times when it is uh, a spinning serve. Forehand ending any sort of challenge for Herman in that Tursun off service game. Two games off, that's it. And do you think when he does miss that particular ball, he's thinking just a little too much as opposed to reacting? Yeah, I agree. I, I, I definitely think he just needs to pick his spot and, uh, and go for it. And I think you're absolutely right. He's, he's almost thought himself into that error. Don't you think that's also a part of the process of getting older and this is why you see so many players stop at this age? Yeah, and th that's why a guy like Tursunov is so dangerous because he doesn't have any fear about... He has complete and utter belief that he's going to hit the right shot and usually, whether even if it's the wrong shot, the fact that he's made the decision is strength enough to get through these moments. Covered it well. Yeah, it was a moment really where you felt, I have to cover the low part of the net. And Henman does just that. Obviously, down the lines, the net is six inches higher down that sideline. Yeah. 
Excellent length there from Hammond, and uh, just going back to that point of getting older, because you don't have so many sort of uh, disappointments in your career early on, it's so much easier if you can make it quickly because you don't have to dwell on all the things that have happened. But there's no question that, that Hemman's recent run of form, losing in final sets, is more psychological than it is his actual tennis. Yeah, it, it, it is funny when you start getting into the 28 to 33 range, all of a sudden, where before you just stepped up the line and knew you needed to hit, all of a sudden, where before you just stepped up the line and knew you needed to hit a serve, sometimes, oh gosh, I want to play this a little safe as opposed to doing what you need to do. And that thought process is what can set you back. Which is why I think I'm rightly saying in the, certainly in recent years, it's only been like a Andres Gomez and uh, Peter Calder that have won sort of slams and, you know, past the age of 20. Andre Agassi, you know, but these are exceptional individuals. But obviously. he'd already won one early in his career. I'm talking exactly. about your first major. Yeah. good was that the first knockdown of the day give him the standing eight oh it could have been a, a little nasty there is uh, foot got caught on the uh, court there but uh, fortunately for Tersnoff didn't go over on his ankle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how good is that? I mean, first Henman plays a brilliant point, yes. and then it's Tersanov. It's a very high quality match. Both men forcing the other to play better and better. How many chips does Henman have left that he can throw into the middle of the table here? wasn't as easy as it looked in the end. It was dropping sharply. And he had to stick the brakes on as well. Yeah, he'll be tiptoeing through the garden in about a year's time, but for now he had to tiptoe around the net. He can breathe a sigh of relief there. His seventh ace of the match. Three games to two, third set. And Hemman edges ahead in this third set. 3-2. Sunday double. Absolute beauty! Cheeky or what? First, Pompey travel to the Emirates. Oh my goodness! Arsenal v Portsmouth, 1 p.m. Sky Sports 1 and HD1. Then, Absolutely it's Aston Villa versus Chelsea. Unbelievable quality. Unbelievable. A Ford Super Sunday double starts Sunday from 1, Sky Sports 1 and HD1. out like a drama life insurance for your life story because change happens Zurich
He has a wonderful ability, doesn't he, Tersnoff, to be able to take that shot either way. Oh, right now, he's just seeing the ball. He's not even worrying about the pressure Henman's applying moving forward. He sees the ball, picks his spot, and hits it to that spot. I see that's what Henman is hoping for. Just a few breakdowns. a letdown of a, a different nature off the top of the net and uh, Hemman here with a little opening oh and again you can only marvel at the quality of passing shots that comes off Tersonoff racket Didn't really do anything wrong for me there, Hemini. Knifed that approach shot, tried to get in. Now just hiding his backhand well, dictating play with his forehand. at a nice time for Henman because he's playing well this game. Tersonov, this is the moment when he is vulnerable. So Henman has to pounce. Might be a nice time for him, Mark, to take that backhand and hit it. Instead of chipping, you know, hit it. Take a bit of a risk. He didn't give Henman much of a chance to do anything in that point. And that's a sign of a great competitor. His own version of the Pete Sampras jumping overhead. It's been called from the chair. And uh, second serve for Tersonov. Russian delivers a second serve onto the line, and this is quite a pulsating third set. And uh, you really feel it's so pivotal really to Hemman's chances of causing an upset here. So the second half of this third set just about to uh, get underway. never entirely sure with the new balls whether it's an advantage against Tersnov or it allows him just to rip the ball just a touch harder. Yeah, and uh, the ball travels through the air more quickly. It hits the court and then accelerates off the court.
Well, Tursunov, for some time, worked with Jose Higueras, the American coach who spent some time working with Jim Currier and other top Americans. I think he calmed Tursunov down a little bit and took him to another level in terms of his execution, his consistency. Obviously, there's still a little work for Tursunov to do yet, but you can see the strides he's made as a player. And he reminds me a little bit of a Marat Safin in that he's highly skilled, very moody, however, and at times mercurial in the way he plays. You know, if his mood is right and the ball seems to be striking off his racket well that day, he might be unbeatable, as Safin was in the 2000 final here in the U.S. Open. despite Tursunov's obvious power advantage at the back of the court. In terms of their serving speed, Temmins hit one today at 131, and Tursunov just one mile an hour faster. And he's been out-aced as well, the Russian, by the British number two. Nine aces to five. And Hemmons sits down 4-3 in front in this third set. insurance not anymore Hastings Direct has conquered the cost of car insurance being named cheapest provider for three years running so for cheaper car insurance call 0800 00 1066 Hastings Direct's UK based call centers could save you up to 236 pounds or go online see how much you could save on your car or motorcycle insurance call 0800 00 1066 or visit HastingsDirect.com HastingsDirect.com Relationships are like marathons. Huh? Why? It takes dedication. You don't think I'm going to finish, do you? Stamina. You have been trying to get to Libby for five years now. Oh. I will run the marathon. Yeah. What? For Dennis Doyle, <laughs> it's no guts. Your legs might be a little rubbery. I'm fine. <laughs> no glory. <laughs> Simon Pegg. <laughs> Tandy Newton. I think I got a blister. Oh! Run, fat boy, run. I love to pop it. Post it! Ah! tantalizing moment in this uh, third set right now just one bad service game from uh, either man and they could hand the advantage to their opponent <laughs> extraordinary first point Well, we missed on the replay the one between the legs. It says a lot about Tursunov. He's a character. Well, wasn't it this uh, place last year at the USA when he played Federer, where Federer played that outrageous shot at the net between his legs or something to win the point against Hemant? That's the trick to beating Hemant, obviously. Couple of enthralling points at the start of this game. Hemmons claimed both of them. Now watch this shot over his head. Watch him change the grip. And this is a great play. Jimmy Connors used to make that play. He was originally from Belleville, Illinois. They called it the Belleville Backfire. So what do we call that one? The British backfire? I don't know. It seemed to do pretty good for him. Yeah, the Oxford overhead just doesn't really have the same ring no, to it, does it? it doesn't quite have the same ring. Although I like the try. It was good. Hemant 
perhaps he'll have enjoyed the fact that that second serve came into his form and gave him the opportunity to drive it as you've been advocating Leaf. Well, we can all hold our breath here. Two break points for Hemant. And if he could take one of them, he'd be serving for a two sets to one lead. And for a second time in this set, Tursunov coughs up a double fall on a break point. Well, Tursunov's going for the challenge, but I think this is more out of hope than anything else. It looked long. No, that was long. I'm not sure they need 10 cameras to tell us that, but uh, I guess you have to go through it. He's going to put his cards on the table. It might not be enough. Oh, you're kidding me. I mean, that's a stunner. Wow. Well, I was talking to Carlos Ramos before he went on for this match. And he was just saying to me that he felt as though it was a, a good tool. It was accurate to a certain degree, but it wasn't perfect. And, well, I have to say that looked long. And what a potential lucky break for uh, Tursunov. It's academic. Hemman breaks anyway. And he's rolling back the years in this point, covering the net like a blanket. play that the Australians made famous all those years ago as you like to call it wide to wide and Hemman takes the opening point of this game it's the perfect evening for Hemman to ride off into the sunset but it looks as though he's going to try and hang around a little longer Volleys equally well off the back end as at the forehand. If this match were two hours long, he'd be winning. He'd have won. Still more tennis ahead. There's always still a clear and present danger when Tursunov's up the other end of the court. You can never, ever rely on him doing the predictable. And a wonderful flashing return from the Russian keeps him in this game. Potentially three successive games, Hemant will have won at the end of this set. And these two set points will seal a two sets to one advantage. Backhand down the line from the Russian. And saves the first of the two set points. Henman had to feel like he was safe in that rally. Somehow this man found space and a winning stroke.
There it is. He takes it on his second set point. Some vintage Hemmen there on the serve and volley. And can Hemmen stay in the US Open? Two sets to one, he leads the number 27 seed. Tesnoff serving at the start of the fourth. Well, a whole rash of uh, double faults really starting to affect Tesnoff's play. Now, when I spoke with him this summer about his serve, he said there are times when I'm just not feeling good on my serve. I don't know what I'm doing. And this was in Indianapolis at a tournament that he won. So there are moments when he suffers from real confusion out there. And see, that's the way he plays through it. And normally, if you're struggling on a shot, there's some key or clue that you can get in. I need to get my toss up higher, get my chest up to the ball, whatever it is. And I don't think Tursunov has an answer of how to address that inconsistency. Because you can see, he's not really close to finding that first serve. Nobody does it like Emin anymore. Yeah, and uh, you thought this was a winning volley, but Tursunov is so quick. He nearly pulled off a miraculous get and winner and Henman can never rest he has to be sharp and he is <laughs> I mean that is just an enormous forehand from Tursunov once again he has to possess enormous forehand from Tursunov once again he has to possess some of the biggest ground shots off both sides so evenly matched as well. I mean, generally you'd say one side is much more powerful than the other, but not with the Russian. It wasn't meant, but it was certainly effective. And Hemman right now evoking memories of days gone by. Oh, he had the line, didn't he? just did not get the length and Tursunov is leaning the other way so there was some space there look at it he knows it Any 
interesting to see what Alan Cohen was talking about and not keeping the ball up the middle of the court because when he does, Tursunov can be just so consistently dangerous and he kept Hemman on the run there. percentage dropping all the time for the Russian under 50 percent now encouraging when he can start winning those sort of uh, rallies from the back of the court as well. Because Tersinov expects to win most of those, and that can erode his confidence, his belief. about it Tursunov on the ropes yeah and he cannot find a first serve Kenny I mean this is Henman's moment Did he miss his moment there? Yes. Well, Tursunov held up his position well, defended the net. Boy, there was some room developing down the line. Henman just didn't see it. And you can see he's thinking about that in his mind's eye. Tursunov is fortunate to still be serving. It's a little early to say, but we may, uh, well, certainly Hemman will be potentially ruining that choice of shot on the break point. No such problem for Tursunov this time on game point, though. A glorious forehand up the line, and he manages to hang on. Yeah, tennis matches can turn by the slightest of margins, and who knows how significant that point was, but nonetheless, Tursunov comes through a tough, tough game. 